Just one fond memory in your working relationship with uh, the late Moe Kibaki. Well, thank you very much for, for, for that question and good evening. Uh, first of all, uh, let me take this opportunity to convey my condolences to Kenyans and to the family and friends of the late President Mwai Kibaki, uh, who was our third president. Um, my relations with him was uh, quite good, uh, but I would want to say that I first met him in the year 2002 when I was elected as the member of parliament for a Muhaya in Vihiga County. And uh, subsequently in the year 2008, I was elected as a speaker and therefore became the head of the legislature. And I worked with him closely because I was uh, in effect uh, the head of the second arm of government. Okay, so you worked with Moe Kibaki. A lot has been said about his achievements and a lot of people look at his achievements from the economic angle and what he did. But how, did, how much did you play as a Speaker of the 10th Parliament to support government business at that time? And how much did this contribute to the eventual success of uh, President Moe Kibaki? I think uh, it contributed tremendously because from what you've been hearing uh, from a lot of comments by Kenyans, by leaders from different sectors, all of them have a common mind that uh, the 10th parliament uh, was the best parliament that they have had for many years. And secondly, that the most effective government that Kenya has had has been the coalition government that ran from 2008 to 2013. And why was it the most effective? It was the most effective because it had an effective parliament. Checks and balances were in, in, in place. Separation of powers was respected. Uh, and so we take a credit for this. And perhaps one of the things that I remember uh, President Kibaki very memorably for is that he was a respecter of the rule of law. He was a, a, dem a Democrat par excellence, and, and, and that he was a good listener. Okay, good listener. There is an event that happened when you were just sworn in as the member of, uh, as the Speaker of the National Assembly. You are a member of parliament sponsored by a section of the membership then before you became the speaker naturally a speaker it was expected that you would take sides but you didn't take sides how much of his influence in terms of respecter of law steered you to that direction because everyone thought that uh, even your rulings the position you would have taken in parliament would have been one-sided but against all that you steered parliament and we know as you say and we rightfully agree that 10th parliament was one of the best sessions of that parliament. What steered me in the direction that I took on that night, the 15th of uh, January, I was, and in fact, uh, President Kibaki was present uh, in that sitting uh, throughout, from the beginning until the end. Uh, but what, what led me to do whatever I did was just my understanding of the law. Uh, because I assume, before I assumed that office on the 15th of January 2008, I had uh, been an active practitioner of the law for 30 years. I, and not just a practitioner from uh, the idle sense, I, I had run a law firm actively as the senior partner in that law firm. So I interacted with a lot of situations where you must think on your feet. And secondly, therefore, my comprehension of the Constitution was, was, was largely just above average. I understood the standing orders. I knew what regulations meant. And I was aware where I would find my law if I got stuck. Okay, v very interesting. But talk to us about um, the changes that, for example, uh, President Mwai Kibaki brought in terms of leadership and steering of this country. Because a lot that has been said is that 
He is arguably the best chief executive officer that uh, the country has had and may have in a long time. Do you agree with those sen sentiments, Speak? And if you agree, what would it be for you that you would attribute to this? I have already told you that uh, I accept that. And, and the first thing I told you is that he was uh, a respecter of the rule of law, mm -hmm. a respecter of the doctrine of separation of powers, and uh, a good listener. And then what I remember significantly is that uh, he helped us as the head of the executive and, and the president for that matter, therefore, to bring about the 2010 constitution which every Kenyan is proud about. It is because there was leadership from the executive. Okay, As so, you will be aware, all yeah. bills um, are drafted by the executive, then they come to the office of the Attorney General and they find their way uh, to Parliament. So he provided leadership in that regard. That is why we have the 2010 uh, constitution. All right. What will be the untold story about the coalition government that perhaps you'd want Kenyans to know in the working relationship between Mwai Kibaki and Raila Odinga? Who was your friend and how difficult it was to nav navigate during that time, Speaker? <laughs> it was very difficult to navigate uh, the, the parliament that time, the House. We were a unicameral uh, parliament. You know, we had just one house, uh, the National Assembly. And as you are rightly alluding to uh, the kind of relationship that was presumed to be in place, Raila Odinga, uh, the, who then became the prime minister, was my friend, he's still my friend today. He was my party leader. And President Kibaki was also a friend of mine. And at that point, he was the president of the Republic of Kenya. So as the Speaker of the National Assembly, obviously I knew what the pecking order was. And then uh, the most difficult moment, the, the one that is the untold story, uh, is that 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 evening there was there was heavy debate on whether or not, for example, I should swear in uh, President Kibaki in Parliament. Mm -hmm. And so, as the Speaker, indeed, my role was to preside over the business of the House, and I understood that reasonably well. So I allowed members to ventilate. I took all arguments, heavy as they were, surprising as they were, because I had not been prepared for that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, to reflect on it, I was wondering uh, if that is really uh, what, what, what I was up to. I, I, I didn't know that that, was, that that is what I was going to face. And then here you are, uh, there were points of order that uh, I should not uh, swear him in uh, because the presidency was under challenge. Illegitimately, uh, and those arguments were done very early from the audio side by my friends like uh, the Honorable James Orengo, uh, mm. Nyang Nyong, Ababu Namwamba. And on the other side, we equally had uh, strong members, uh, Masa Karua, uh, Kiraitu, Murungi, also very good lawyers and friends of mine. So what did I do? I listened to all the arguments. Okay. Strong arguments were and sound were, but now I understood what the law says. Okay. So it was the one of, of my duties that evening was yes. to swear in members of parliament. Yes. President Kibaki had been sworn in as the president of Kenya elsewhere, and it was not my business to swear him in as the president. It was my business to swear him in as the member of parliament for Othai. And there were no issues around his election as a member of parliament for Othai. Yes. All right. 
even as I so the rest of the unknown yeah. story yeah. yes continue yeah. continue speaker uh, the, the rest of the unknown story of course are, are the objections by Ababu Namwamba uh, which was also received very heavy contributions that night yeah. uh, that the form of the oath was unsound because President Kibaki had not been properly elected, that the election was still under challenge, and that may very well be so. I took those arguments graciously as best as I could. Okay. But then from my practice of law, I understood that the oath of office for a public servant for members of parliament is provided for under the statutes uh, and the uh, Oats Declarations Act, okay. which is part of the laws of Kenya. Okay. So what did I do? Mm -hmm. Just call for the volume of the laws of Kenya, and I found that indeed in the schedule of that law, the Act, the, 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 the Oats is provided for. And before members of parliament will amend that form of the Oats, they had to take it in that form. Okay, very interesting. I need to let you go. We're coming back to ask uh, one or two more questions. <laughs> uh, so stay with us, Speaker. We are back because I know the Ababu Namwamba issue was big in Parliament. How you navigated through it was very interesting. But when we come back, I'd like to ask the Speaker one of uh, the legislations from uh, the top of his mind that he hold a credit to the working relationship between himself uh, as an arm of government where he led and Mwai Kibaki, who led another arm of government. When we come back, we talk about that. But remember, in the next hour, I'll also be speaking to three gentlemen who know Kibaki, who know Kenya like the back of their hands. Stay with us. News Hour is back in a moment. <laughs>